Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of our beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Uh, please bear with me today, I have a bit of a cold, but I'm going to give it my best. <coughs> Nama Om Vishnu Vidaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamini Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharane, Ivishesha Shunyavadi Pastrata Deshatarane. All glories to Prabhupada. <clears throat> so we are continuing with our mini-series on stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be part 29. In our last lecture, we discussed the role of cows in awakening our love for Krishna. Today, I would like to discuss, in particular, how Vrindavan's cows play an important role in increasing the residence of Vrindavan's love for Krishna. It's an interesting angle. Of course, all the residents of Vrindavan are already pure devotees, and their love for Krishna is perfect and complete. It doesn't need to be awoken. It's always been pure from time immemorial. However, it's always increasing. It's always increasing. The other day we quoted the following verse from uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Adi Lila 4131, very famous verse, about how Srimati Radharani's love for Krishna is increasing moment by moment. Srila uh, Kaviraj Goswami, he writes, <clears throat> All glories to Radha's love for Krishna, the enemy of the demon Mura. Although it is all pervading, it tends to increase at every moment. Although it is important, it is devoid of pride. And although it is pure, it is always beset with duplicity. <clears throat> so we hear how Radharani's love is always increasing. Now, there are some nice details which demonstrate the role, the role that cows play in increasing the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. So, after churning milk and getting butter from the cows they milked each morning, the gopis uh, would put that butter into pots. Which, which they would place on the top of their heads. And then they would proceed to you know, various villages around Vrindavan to sell that milk and the milk products uh, in the markets. Uh, I was reading the gopis used various types of pots for carrying the butter and other milk products. In particular, Srimati Radharani used a golden pot called Kanaka Kalsika. Kanaka Kalsika, um, in such a pot that the neck um, is very narrow, and, but the opening is very big. And Lalita Saki, she used a silver pot, and the other gopis, they used mainly um, clay pots, like that. Now, the other type of milk products they carried in their pots is very interesting. They would carry Miti Dadhi, which is described as a sweet curd, nun dadi, which is a salted curd, klish malai, which is um, sour cream, and mishte navnit, which is uh, sweet butter, and nun navnit, which means uh, literally a salted butter, and chash, or buttermilk, uh, mixed with cumin seeds and salt, like that. So externally, <clears throat> the gopis would make all these milk products for getting dhan, for getting dhan, meaning uh, money or wealth. You go to the Sanskrit dictionary, it means, uh, dhan means money or wealth. And this they would get by going to the markets. But it's interesting, another translation of dhan, even more subtle, is treasure. Treasure. There's actually a verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Swapne Veshe Premhe Prabhura Gara Gara Mana Bhaya Hale Haya Yena Haraila Dhana. We hear the word Dhana. Translation is When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dreamed of the Rasa dance, he was fully absorbed in transcendental bliss. But when his dream broke, he thought he had lost a precious jewel. A precious jewel. So in the word for word, um, Srila Prabhupada translates dan, it's actually the last word in that verse, dan, as something very precious. 
not just wealth, but he just he translated it as something very precious. And in the translation, Prabhupada translates it as a precious jewel, a precious jewel. So the reason I'm saying this is because one acharya has played very nicely on this word dhan. He says that when the gopis go to sell their various milk products, their real intention is not to obtain wealth, but rather to obtain the dhan, the precious jewel of Krishna's association. <laughs> How so? Because so often when they're going you know, to the markets, Krishna's waiting for them along the various pathway, pathways through Vindavan of the pretext of taxing their wares. Therefore, he says, wherever or whenever the gopis see cows by whose milk they attain the precious jewel of Krishna's association, it acts as a stimuli for remembering Krishna and increases their love for him. Isn't that sweet? The cows help stimulate everyone's love for Krishna in a special way like that for the gopis. <clears throat> So, Vrindavan's cows, they, they love Krishna as much as everyone else loves Krishna in Vrindavan. I was reading that one time, after some cowherd men had decorated and ornamented Nanda Maharaja's cows and uh, set them free to, to mingle with their calves, as they always do, they then directed the cows to the best of grasses. The best of grasses. And we discussed this some years ago, actually. Where are the best of grasses in Vrindavan? Jai Giriyaj Govardhan Laalaki at Govardhan Hill. Nanda Maharaja's cows are especially attracted to the grasses at Govardhan Hill. Why? Because they're very soft and they don't uh, cut the tongues of the cows. Sometimes cows' tongues get cut when they take grass. Grass can be sharp. Not at, not at Govardhan Hill. And the milk <coughs> that they give after eating that grass <clears throat> makes the best sweets in Vrindavan Dham. So if you're looking for the best sweets in Vrindavan, you have to ask the sweet maker, did you get this milk from cows that ate the grasses at Govardhan Hill? Yes, okay, I'll buy it. No, I'm not going to buy it. So however, that day, you know, after the coward men had taken the cows to these special grasses that go over down hill, they were shocked when they got there and the cows refused to eat the grass. Now that's unusual, isn't it? I've seen cows, you know, they're, they're let loose into the fields. They, <laughs> they're eating as they're running. <laughs> they just love the grass. Here's the best grass in Vrindavan. They refused. Nope, we're not going to eat it. Fortunately, however, the wisest, it's described, the wisest of the coward men understood the situation. And he suddenly called out to Krishna, saying, Oh, Gopal, our cows will not eat unless you sweeten these grasses with the touch of your lotus hands. Nothing else will satisfy them. Please, Krishna, come now and fill each cow with delight. And with that, Krishna, who was, you know, he was somewhere else, herding another herd of cows. But he once appeared, at once appeared there at Govardhan Hill and expanded himself into as many forms as there were cows. Just like we hear in the Rasa Leela, Krishna expands himself to dance with each gopi. And this is how dear the cows are to Krishna. He expanded himself to be with each cow. Then he fed them all with his lotus hands and then it's described he scratched their heads with his hands. Cows love that. Now, it's so sweet. You know, cows play such an intricate role in stimulating love in Vrindavan. It's described that when the cows saw Krishna, he entered their hearts. And with that, they were, they were um, filled with such bliss that they became, uh, how would you say, indifferent to their calves. In the same way that Yogis become indifferent to the world. <laughs> so after that, out of affection, the coward men, they wanted to uh, circumambulate their beloved herd of cows. Why? Well, <laughs> they love the cows. They're sacred. 
So much like, you know, we want to do, we want to go on Purukama to circumambulate Vrindavan or Govardhan Hill. But there was a problem because there were so many cows, 900,000 to be exact. And to go around them all was impossible. So Krishna was there. He suggested that they circumambulate just one cow, which he said would give the same auspicious benefit as, as circumambulating all of them. In fact, Krishna said, <clears throat> just as one nourishes all the leaves and branches of a tree by watering its roots, so we can simultaneously adore all our cows and bulls by circumambulating just one cow and one bull. How important is just one cow and one bull to Krishna? <clears throat> so they did that. They went around one cow and one bull. And then they worshipped. Um, they had a ceremony for worshipping the cows and the bulls. So at that point in the pastime, Krishna's herd of calves, um, who were also somewhere near Govardhan Hill, they arrived. So then after worshipping the cows and the bulls, the coward men encouraged the boys to worship the calves. And it's very nice how they did it. It's described they, they worshiped the calves by decorating them with cloth, uh, painting pictures on their bodies, and then blissfully frolicking with them. That was a mode of worship. They frolicked with the cows, the calves. <laughs> so then Krishna made the frisky calves lay down to rest by playing uh, special sounds on his flute. And then the cowherd boys, they circumambulated the calves, like their fathers had done to the cows, and then paid all of them respectful obeisances. I thought that was interesting. After circumambulating their calves, the boys, what did they do? They bowed down and paid respectful obeisances. And seeing this, Krishna was really pleased with his friends when he saw them offering obeisances to, to, the, to the calves. And he said something very significant. He said, at the heart of devotion to cows is the act of offering obeisances to them. This is from the, the lotus mouth of the Lord. At the heart of devotion to cows is the act of offering obeisances to them. Wow. So I thought that's an instruction that those who take care of cows, bulls, and calves on our International Society for Krishna Consciousness Farms, they might like to introduce <laughs> introduce that instruction. At the heart of devotion to cows is the act of offering obeisances to them. Outsiders might find it strange, but not after you've heard this lecture. Cows are so important in stimulating love for Krishna in, in the spiritual world. Now, there's another nice pastime that took place um, after uh, Krishna had saved the Brajabhasis uh, by lifting Govardhan Hill, you know, as soon as, as Indra had given up, you know, trying to drown Vrindavan in water and had left back to his celestial kingdom for the time being, the Brajabhasis, they repeatedly shouted, Giriraj ki jai, Giriraj ki jai, Giriraj ki jai. And they started uh, coming out from under the hill. And when they came out from under the hill, they were surprised to find Vrindavan had suddenly been restored to its original beauty. You can just imagine, you know, we hear the type of rain that Indra had sent to Vrindavan. It was, it was to devastate Vrindavan. And it must have looked really, the scene must have been very sad. But when they came out, suddenly it was restored to its original beauty. And Shasta describes how so. Nice detail said forest animals were already happily dancing about. Bent over trees were riding themselves up. Rivers were flowing peacefully again. And the wind, free of its destructive mode, was blowing gently. Muddy roads and pastures had already dried up. And the air was filled with the sounds of singing birds and buzzing bees. Usually after a storm, there's a the big snow hurricane, there's devastation. But this is Vrindavan. She <laughs> Vrindavan Dam Ki. Now, the first of the Brajabhasis to walk out 
were the coward boys. They walked out from under Govardhan Hill. Actually, Krishna is still holding the hill. <laughs> the pastime just finished, the rain just finished. So the boys are the first to walk out. All the while it's described encouraging the cows to follow them. Come on, come on cows, come on, come, come, come. The cows, however, were reluctant to leave Krishna, who was still standing, again, holding up Govardhan Hill. Actually, for seven days, those cows had continuously gazed upon Krishna's sweet face. And the Acharyas say they had lost uh, interest in the things that they had previously... That, no, they lost interest in the things that had previously brought them pleasure. In other words, they experienced the highest pleasure of being in Krishna's personal association, very close to him for seven days. However, with some uh, coaxing from the cowherd boys, the cows suddenly, uh, how is it described, shot out into the open air like a volley of arrows. They shot out into the open air like a volley of arrows. And running about, they jumped and they kicked in great happiness. You may have seen this sometimes, you know, when cows are, you know, in the barn for a long time and then they open the barn to go pasture. You see the cows are so happy. They eat grass. They're jumping and they're kicking. They kick in the air like that. Their tails go up. However, when these cows looked back, it's so sweet, and saw that Krishna was still beneath the mountain, still holding it up, because it, the past time just finished, they ran back inside to be with him. And there they surrounded him, and what did they do? They licked his body continuously. Animals do like that. In this world, sometimes cats you know, lick their owners, dogs lick the face of their owners. <laughs> but a sacred cow, Surabi cow, transcendental personality, I'd like to get licked by that cow. So they surrounded Krishna and licked his body. So this time Krishna took it upon himself to, you know, the pastime has to move on now, everybody out, to drive the cows out. And how did he do it? It's so nice. It's written, by means of compassionate glances and familiar flute melodies, which sent the cows streaming out from under Govardhan Hill in all directions at once. So seeing this, all the Brachabhasis were overjoyed to see their cows happy back in the pasturing grounds around Govardhan. So then all the Brachabhasis, they departed from Giriraja's shelter. They took their, described their musical instruments with them and while dancing uh, out from under Govardhan Hill, what did they do? They simply sang of, of Krishna's heroic feats. And so should we. On our way to work, on our way to school, or back home, we should sing of Krishna's heroic feats. And if you can't remember them all, everything's there in the Maha Mantra. You can just sing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So, <clears throat> my voice is still working despite the, despite the cold. So, one more pastime. <clears throat> it's actually hard to choose. There's so many cow pastimes <laughs> in Vrindavan, again, because Krishna spends most of the day <laughs> with his cows. So there is a pastime where Krishna and Balaram, um, uh, they once hid from their friends, only to be discovered by their own clever cows, it's written. They were, they were discovered by their own clever cows, not the boys, but the cows. Very sweet. So one day in the pasturing grounds of Vrindavan, while the cows grazed, the coward boys, they were busy playing different games. And at one point, Krishna and Balaram decided to, to play a trick on their friends by walking away and hiding themselves in a very dense part of the forest. Now at first, the coward boys thought that the two brothers had gone to you know, search for some stray cows, which happens sometimes. But later on, towards the evening, uh, when all the cows were called, you know, to go back to Nandagram, they were all accounted for. Krishna Balaram weren't, the, Krishna Balaram weren't there. So the boys began to worry about Krishna and Balaram. 
Krishna and Balaram are the very life and soul of the cowherd boys. One Acharya says, like the air the cowherd boys breathe. Like the air the cowherd boys breathe. How, how dear to us is air? <laughs> you think about it. So Krishna's, you know, as dear to the, the cowherd boys, like air that they breathe. So it's described that in the absence of the brothers, Krishna and Balaram, the boys felt that they were actually slowly suffocating, no air. So they began to call out repeatedly, all together in a chorus, O Krishna, O Ram, O Krishna, O Ram, as they searched throughout the forest. They actually were asking the trees, the deer, and the birds if they'd seen Krishna and Balaram. But as hard as they tried, they couldn't find their brothers. <laughs> if God wants to hide for you, from you, <laughs> no one's going to find them. But if God wants to find you, you can't hide from him. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya even went out and sent Nitai and even found Jagai and Madai. So we're very grateful that Krishna sent Sridhar Papa to find all of us. Otherwise, we may not have made it. Certainly, we would not have made it. So panicking, the boys discussed amongst themselves that maybe a demon or some demons have captured Krishna and Bala. But then they thought, when did a demon ever exist who could defeat our two heroes? They see Krishna like that. Krishna's their hero. Because every day he kills a demon before they have lunch. And the whole subject matter of lunch is how Krishna killed the demon. He's their hero. So when did a demon ever exist who could defeat our two heroes, they thought. They, they were thinking so far... Um, Every demon who's come to Vrindavan has been killed by either Krishna or Balaram or the two of them together. <laughs> so uh, soon the, the boy's concern for Krishna and Balaram became contagious. And all the cows, all the cows started what? It's so sweet. What did what, they start? Mooing in separation from Krishna and Balaram. I, I, I look forward to that day that I can hear a cow moo separation from Krishna and Mara. <laughs> I have to be in the spiritual world, I guess. And so those uh, cows, they also began searching through the forest. It's described as if they were searching for their own calves. Now we've got the boys searching and we have the cows searching. Then it's described that some especially Again, clever cows took the lead and followed the trans transcendental scent of Krishna and Balaram's bodies. Wow. So seeing this, the coward boys, they just joyfully followed behind the cows, encouraging them on. And it's described that this herd of cows, uh, followed by cheering coward boys, snaked its way through the forest until it reached Krishna and Balaram's hiding place. Whereupon arriving, the cows began mooing very loudly in a special tone. I don't know what that tone is. They started mooing in a special tone while digging the earth with their hooves and looking into the bushes. So with those sure signs, the coward boys who were following them started running to where Krishna and Balaram were hiding, shouting, they must be in there, they must be in there. And as they approached, Krishna and Balaram came out of their hiding place, jumping up and down and dancing all around, ecstatic that they had played such a good trick on their friends, but especially because they had been found by their loving cows. So just see how the cows play such an intricate role, stimuli in awakening the Rajabasi's love Krishna. That was the theme of this lecture today. So from that day on, <clears throat> that spot, that place has been called uh, Pashupa. Pashupa meaning the place where the cows, Pashu, had found Krishna and Balaram, while the cowherd boys had followed the cows' hoof prints, Pa. Therefore, therefore that place is called Pashupa, or sometimes uh, Pashopa. Pashupa or Pashopa in, in, in Vrindavan. So, 
you know, maybe next car take, <laughs> we should go there, and we can, we can all play hide and seek. <laughs> hide and seek as well. That's the, the theme of that place. So, um, this pastime actually has a spiritual message to it as well. The Acharyas say that <clears throat> um, Krishna is present everywhere, even in our hearts. But we cannot uh, know him unless, like the coward boys, we follow in the footsteps of great souls who know how to find Krishna. Now, in this pastime, it means the cows. They're all great, realized, pure devotees to the Lord, fully conscious. Some souls want to be, play that role in Krishna's pastime. Some want to be trees. Every living entity in the spiritual world is fully realized. They're all contributing a variety of wonderful, beautiful sentiments that make up the great love that is there for Krishna in the spiritual world. So Krishna is present everywhere, even in our hearts, but we cannot know him unless, like the coward boys, we follow in the footsteps of great souls who know how to find Krishna. And with that in mind, I thought we would finish today with a... It's a famous verse from... Mahabharat, with a similar theme. I think it's uh, Vanaparva 313-117. Dharmashatatvam nihitam kahuyam mahajano yena katasapanta. It is very difficult to understand the secrets of Krishna consciousness, but the truths of religious principles are hidden in the hearts of unadulterated, self-realized persons. Therefore, one should follow in the footsteps of such Mahajans, or great souls. And we are doing that because we are all followers of our founder, Acharya, Shira Prabhupada. And he will lead us back to that world of love and bliss. And we'll be able to see these cows and become inspired by their devotion to Krishna. It's contagious. Bhakti is contagious. So thank you, Shira Prabhupada, for leading us like a herd back to the spiritual world. We'll finish there, Prabhu. Um, that's about all we have on cows, just two classes. Um, Vrindavan's Unlimited, we'll, we'll look through Nectar of Devotion or um, Bhakti Rasa Mita Sindhu and find some more items or personalities who can inspire us in our uh, bhakti to the divine couple, Shishi Vada Shama Sindhu. So, thank you. I'll see, see you in one week. <coughs> Hope I don't have a cold then. Shishi Gorani Thai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Vada Shama Sundar Ki, Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki, All of Krishna's Cows Ki, Maya Purdam Ki, Shishi Gorani Thai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Nitai Gaur Pimanandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe, Shar, Glorious to Prabhupada.